path that followed the arrival of the first Europeans in this country, the Haudenosaunee found their land base dwindle. However, they still were a power to be reckoned with. None knew this better than George Washington, and two major treaties were struck. The first was at Fort Stanwix in 1784, and then another one ten years later. A greater treaty was set up, and that treaty came about in Canandaigua in 1794. And that's called the Canandaigua Treaty, the Pickering Treaty, the George Washington Treaty, however you want to talk about it. But in the beginning, in this huge statement, the President of the United States, George Washington, that's how the treaty begins. Peace and friendship with the Six Nations forever. Our lands never to be disturbed. And so, you could say that perhaps even at that time, the very future of the United States hinged on those meetings and those treaties. We're talking about 1794, and we're talking about internationally recognized powers, not only of the United States, but by the Haudenosaunee, who had treaties with France, with England, with Holland. It's this agreement upon which the Six Nation Confederacy based the justification for our present land claims. Now today, when we speak of these treaties, people are surprised. Well, first of all, they're surprised that there are Indians still here. <clears throat> not, not to say Indians with treaties and rights. And so they often discuss, how can you have a nation within a nation? Well, simple, because the method and the agreement was struck in 1794, and the country went around us. I mean, it was agreed upon by the United States that there would be a nation here. And so we remind these people again and again, that we have a standing treaty. And we've, these treaties have been violated. They've been violated again and again. Tomorrow night, giving thanks. Dick Hoffman, TV3 News.